With wiry teeth, revolving cards release The tangled knots and smooth the raveled fleece Next moves the iron hand with fingers fine Comb the wide card and forms the eternal line Then fly the spores, the rapid axles glow And slowly circumvolve the labouring wheel below In 1769, Richard Arkwright, partner of Jedediah Strutt was to take the cotton spinning industry to its next stage by the invention of the water frame. In 1776, the first cotton mill in Belper was started by Jedediah Strutt. Two or three joiners and one or two smiths of good character and good workmen apply at the cotton mills at Belper. The mill was situated on land bought for him by William Slater. Iron works to be sold in the parish of Duffield and county of Derby, beautifully situated upon each side of the River Derwent. 1785 to 1805, in order to meet the needs of the new workforce, the Struts provided housing. They built Short Row, then North and South Terraces by the Clusters. By 1831, they owned at least one-fifth of the town's houses, 300 in total. It is doubtful whether the public life and amenities of any other community in Britain owe as much to the wisdom and the generosity of one man as Belper owes to George Herbert Strutt. He was to die a wealthy man, even though he would probably have been proudest of the tribute that he was one of the few landlords who had not raised the rent since the war. We hear from Belper that Mr Strutt has entirely at his own expense instituted a Sunday school for the benefit of all youth of both sexes employed in his cotton mill and provides them with the necessary books for learning to read and write. 1777, Jedediah Strutt was looking for a boy who exhibited an aptitude for business management, competence in arithmetic and an organised mind. Samuel Slater, son of William Slater, was taken on as apprentice at the age of 14. For six years he worked to obtain his indentures, receiving training in all aspects of cotton manufacturing. On January 8, 1783, Samuel Slater received his indenture papers. These papers were soon to become his most valued possession. If he had been confined to one branch of business, as is usual with an apprentice in England, his knowledge would have been inadequate to perform what he did on the first coming to America. But his residence in Strutt's family, his being the son of his deceased friend and neighbour, as well as his close application to business, his ingenious experiments and his steady habits, gave him the character of the industrious apprentice. The Strutt's cotton spinning industry was blossoming. In 1784, they had built their second mill. The West Mill was completed in 1796, and the Round Mill was added by 1816. In 1833, the Strutt's employed 2,000 workers in Belper. The industry's success, combined with the Strutt's generosity, began to shape the town and its amenities. On Saturday afternoon, the new open-air swimming baths presented to Belper by Mr Herbert Strutt were formally opened to the public. There was a good attendance of lady visitors, and Mr Alfred Smedley thanked Mr Strutt for his noble gift to the town. Doffing his overcoat, he took a header into the water. Mr Southern quickly followed his example, both gentlemen thus opening the bath by a display of fancy swimming which was very much appreciated. Restrictions were placed by the English government upon the exportation of machinery designs or the emigration of skilled mechanics. In 1789, Samuel Slater sailed to America. He hid his indenture papers on his person by sewing them into the lining of his coat. Slater left England with the same sense of secrecy and privacy that characterised his private dealings throughout his life. Those who have left their native country know something of the trials of parting. Young Slater took a last look at his mother he tore himself away from his brothers and sisters, with whom he had taken sweet counsel and with whom he was closely united in fraternal affection. His heart was full when he looked the last time at Holly House and all that was within. But a youthful ambition fired his soul and enabled him to overcome his feelings. In 1897, recession and increasing competition from abroad had cut deeply into the profits of the Strutt family, who owned all the Belper and Milford mills. Two years after the death of George Henry Strutt, his son George Herbert 
Least then sold the mill empire to the newly created English Sewing Company. By the time of Samuel Slater's death, the American cotton industry had truly began to blossom. Samuel Slater commenced with 72 spindles in a clothier's shop at Portucket. The most splendid establishments, as well as the greatest of empires, commenced from small beginnings. By the introduction of the best and latest machinery, and with the advantages of New England water power, we have survived every attack, surmounted every obstacle, and overcome every difficulty. An immense quantity of our cotton clothes are consumed in all parts of the Union, as well as large exportations to South America, where they have driven the British and Indian goods out of these markets. Samuel Slater, the father of our manufacture of cotton, lived to see this astounding change and the successfulness of what he had first introduced.